Hebrews chapter 12. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. See, a lot of people out there go, well, they ask this question. And it proves they haven't really repented. If you want to know false repentance from true repentance, here it is. Some people will say, well, when you talk about repenting of all your sin, they go, well, I mean, we're still going to do it again, though, right? I mean, let's say, you know, a week, a month down the road or a year down the road, you know, so, so what if I cuss again? Uh, am I going to go to hell? And they, they kind of say it in a mocking way. What about, what about Matthew? He was a tax collector, right? And he left everything. But what if he just, what if he just uh, said, okay, Jesus, I'll follow you, but I'll still uh, defraud people as a tax collector, but maybe I won't do it full time. Maybe I'll just do it like one day a week or maybe one day a month or something, you know, just to earn a little bit extra money on the side. I'm going to defraud people and, and steal from them. No, would, would Matthew have been expected to lay it all aside, 100%, every bit of it and have this vehement desire to never defraud somebody again. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, both near and far. This is Trevor with Dying to Live for Jesus, and it is my mission to seek the once saved, just as James chapter 5, 19 and 20 tells all Christians to make it their mission to seek after those who were once saved, but may not always be saved because they have wandered away from the gospel. So in today's salvation message, I want to preach once again against this doctrine of uh, work salvation, uh, those who preach against faithful, faith alone that say that you're saved by works, uh, who preach sinless perfection, who teach that uh, the Christian is not going to have sin or any willful sin in their life. And ultimately, it's just set up to make yourself the Savior and to not rely on the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ as we come to him in confession and uh, strive by faith alone and not by our own works. This is what it's set up to do. And um, the main thing I want to point out here uh, today in this video, well, maybe there's a couple things, and let's just start with the slanderous way that this man speaks against those who say we're going to sin. We know that we're going to sin. Do you see what he says? He compares that First, he, he, he quotes his opponents, those who say we're still going to sin again, though right. And then he equates that to someone who would, like the tax collector, he's going to, just to earn a little bit of extra money on the side, I am going to defraud people, making a plan, okay? He was phrasing this as if this person has their mind set. They've already got their mind made up and they have a plan, as opposed to someone who just has the knowledge that they're going to sin again. And some of, you, some of you might be either scratching your heads or wanting to argue and say, well, what's the difference? If you say you're going to sin again, that's the same thing as planning it out. Okay, and that, I'm sorry guys, that's slander. That's the same thing as in Romans chapter 3, when the Apostle Paul says, why not say, as some slanderously claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. Why are people saying of Apostle Paul that he's saying, let us do evil that good may result? It's because he teaches the cross of Christ, which is not an excuse to sin, but it is an excuse to repent. It is an excuse to confess your sins to God, because when we mess up, God is going to cleanse us with with the blood of Christ. People hear this, the same work salvationists back then heard this. They heard them preaching the forgiveness and the, the freedom that comes through Christ, not by works, but by faith. And they said, aha, these evildoers, they don't want to work for their salvation. What are they saying? Let us just do evil. That's the same thing. That's the same thing that Adam just did here. Okay. He hears you saying, we're still going to sin. And he automatically equates that, or at least implies that what we're saying is we can do whatever we want, and we're going to we're going to make a make a pattern of it. We're going to purposely do it, um, 
and we're we're gonna we're gonna set set aside a little bit of time where we sin on purpose. That's couldn't be further from the truth. And I want to explain to you, I want to use a little analogy and show you the difference between somebody who has their mind made up not to sin, even though we know we're going to sin at times, and someone who has their mind made up to sin. And that's the difference. Okay. And there is a difference. It's not the same thing. Okay. So let's take, for example, a, uh, of a basketball center. So someone who's playing defense as a center and the coach talks to them and he says to them, okay, don't let anybody score on you. And this is a good player. This is someone who has their mind after what the coach says to do. And he wants to please the coach. And he says, okay, I agree with you. I have the same mind that you do. I'm not going to let anybody score. Has anybody ever watched a basketball game? They always get scored on, right? If you're a center, starting center that plays most of the game, you're going to get scored on, okay? That doesn't mean you wouldn't have a mindset that says, I'm never going to get scored on. It doesn't mean the coach wouldn't tell you, don't let anyone score on you, okay? When Jesus says, go and sin no more, he's coming to a center who is getting scored on in a way in which he's going to lose the game because he didn't have a mindset that says, I'm never going to let anybody score on me. He had a mindset that says, I'm going to be lazy on defense. Maybe the coach won't notice. You know, I'm just going to let this guy go by and let him score on me. Okay, that is a mind set after the flesh. That's a mind that results in death. But when the coach comes and he breathes life into him and he redirects him, he gives him a mindset that says, now I'm going to play like a winning player. I'm not going to let anybody score on me. Is someone still going to score on him? Sure. That's going to happen from time to time. That's not, that's not the coach's goal. You'd say, well, the coach's goal, he doesn't, he, doesn't want, he doesn't want anybody to ever score on him. Well, that's what he has to instill into the player, a desire that, that he would never get scored on. Okay, and we'd win 120 to zero. That's, that's what we want. Why would we want anything else? We're a good player. We have a good coach. We want to dominate. But that's just not the fact of the matter. And it's the same thing with the life of a Christian. We've been renewed to showcase that we are the righteous ones. Okay, we're being progress progressively sanctified. This can be seen in our walk. We walk righteously now. We're good centers. Okay, we're good players now. And it's going to be reflective in what we do. And we have a mind set up that we never want to get scored on. We hate getting scored on. We're going to do everything we can not to. Still, we're going to get scored on. And this is why Scripture says that we confess our sins. Christ says, if you don't forgive your brother 777 times in a day, or seven times, seven times 77 times in a day, your father also won't forgive you. Why is that? Because God forgives us every time we sin, when we come to him in confession. And right here is where the work salvationist wants to pause and stop me just like they did in the past, and say, oh, so you're saying let us do evil that good may result. You have your mind made up to sin because you just said you're going to. I just know it's going to happen because I know that I'm not the perfect one. I know that Christ is. But I guarantee you my mind is made up not to ever sin. I just know it's going to happen. So hopefully anybody with an ear to hear can hear, hear what I'm saying. And it's just the truth. I guess if I had it my way, I'd be sinlessly perfect right now, uh, and I wouldn't have to wait until I go to heaven. But I'm satisfied with the blood of Christ, actually, and I feel perfect already. So if I had it my way, I think I'd be doing just what I'm doing now, which is confessing my sins to Christ when I mess up, praise him for his faithful ways, uh, praise him for being the perfect one, Thank him for forgiving me and rescuing me from my sin and taking me to glory, uh, for being the almighty God, um, for creating me, and, and a million other things I can praise him for, rather than just saying, God, I'm just like you. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.